Abel Sanchez says Keith Thurman has no chance of defeating Earl Spence Jr. All right, y'all. It's your boy, Cardinal Red, Cardinal Red Sports. Let's talk about it. So, we all know by now that Keith, one time Thurman, is set to take on Earl, the true Spence Jr., at some point in February of 2023. And boxing pundits, boxing media, former boxers, everyone is voicing their opinion about. Who they feel will win this fight and Abel Sanchez is the latest to give his take saying that Keith Thurman not only has no chance of beating Earl Spence Jr. but he doesn't believe Earl Spence Jr. will even break a sweat to beat Keith Thurman and that's kind of comical kind of funny but I think it's very true I think that is a completely honest and true statement because of the fact that Keith Thurman hasn't been in a boxing ring with championship level competition in over three years. Now, we all know he fought Mario Barrios about eight months ago, six or eight months ago. It was a pretty unanimous decision. It was a pretty decent victory. You know, there wasn't a lot of super duper action keith thurman didn't look spectacular i mean he didn't look like the michael jordan of boxing defeating mario barrios but he definitely did it in his fashion he definitely beat him i won't say mario barrios didn't try to fight back you could tell that there was a there was a gap in the skill levels between thurman and barrios barrios just coming up from 140 me personally i don't think that that was the fight he should have took as his first 147 fight he should have went after somebody like a Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia, someone who's more on his level uh, as far as being a newbie into the 147 division. Danny Garcia, at a lesser extent, has been around 147 for a while. Mikey Garcia, I think, would have been the perfect fight, even though Mikey retired. Someone of Mikey's caliber would have been the perfect matchup for Mario Barrios coming into 147. So... When you say Keith Thurman versus Mario Barrios was a lopsided fight and Keith Thurman didn't look spectacular, he didn't bring anything new to the boxing ring when he came back. He just kind of looked like the better of the two guys because he had more experience. When you carry that into the Earl Spence Jr. fight, that equals a massive beatdown. There's, <laughs> there's no doubt in my mind that Earl Spence is just going to put Paul's all over Keith Thurman. It's going to be an embarrassment to watch. It's really a pointless fight to have put together. But as we all know, because of what Terrence Crawford did with the David Avanzian, or Avanesian, or however you pronounce his name, with the David fight that's coming up, it, it basically puts Spence in a very peculiar situation. We all know Spence has the majority of the 147 belts, and he has mandatories standing behind all those belts. So if you can't get a Terrence Crawford undisputed fight, then you fall back on all those mandatories. And it's a situation to where Keith Thurman is just an easy fight for PBC to put together in the meantime until they can try to work something out with Crawford, which I don't think... It's ever going to happen. Crawford is the type of fighter who wants it all in his corner. He wants it all going his way. He's got to be the superstar. He's one of those. He's like a female almost. When a cute chick walk in the room, she wants everybody to look at her. That's how Terrence Crawford is. When he walk in the room, he thinks all eyes should be on him because of what he accomplished at 140. At 140, he was the prettiest girl in the room and he wants everybody looking at him but unfortunately for him at 147 he ain't the baddest bee in the room no i hate to use that analogy but he ain't the baddest bee in the room no more earl spence is on the top of the mountain at 147 so unfortunately for spence i don't think nothing he can do in the negotiation will ever please turns crawford to the point where he's ready to sign off on a contract that isn't financially in his favor. 
that is more financially in Earl Spencer's favor, even if it's only $5 million more, even if it's only $2 million more. Terrence Crawford is, is, is like a jealous ex-girlfriend. He's He don't want you to end up with nothing. He wants you to be homeless on the street, and that's the only way he's going to make that fight is if Earl Spence somehow decides to give him the bigger piece of the purse split. And like once again, like I said, I don't think that's ever going to happen. So you might as well bank on the fact that Spence versus Crawford is never going to happen. And on top of that, Spence has this situation with Sandy Onis and Virgil Ortiz, which is a, a another mandatory situation that has to happen after Keith Thurman because of the situation with Stanley Onis being put on hold with the step aside money for so long. So the next year of Earl Spencer's career is kind of already planned out. I don't see where Terrence Crawford fits in and I don't see how they get around the WBA's ruling when they said that that mandatory is going to happen or there will be consequences. On top of that, I thought that Virgil Ortiz was the number one in the WBO, which I believe he is, but since he's tied up in this WBA situation, people are telling me that Boots has been elevated to the WBO mandatory, and we all know that ain't no way Terrence Crawford's getting in the ring with Boots. If he gets in the ring with Boots, he might as well get in the ring with Spence and just give his title away. So Terrence Crawford, I think, he has more opportunities to expand his career as far as taking a bunch more easy fights after David Avanzi and he might go get I mentioned yesterday in my video yesterday he it's a possibility he could take on Pacquiao next because of the money that would be surrounding that fight and we all know that Terrence Crawford's all about a dollar and I don't think there's any way in the world that he passes up a 15 million dollar or 10 million dollar payout to fight Manny Pacquiao even though Pacquiao's a tough out, and even though he's ducked him like four times already, I think he would go with that fight on the on the accord of Manny Pacquiao being old and easy to beat in a lot of people's mind. I think he would go after that rather than going after a Boots fight. And a, a Pacquiao fight would sell way better than a Boots fight would, even though a lot of people like Boots. I, I'm a Boots fan, but Boots just isn't third yet in his career to where he's going to sell a bunch of pay-per-views or a bunch of tickets to a venue just yet. It's going to get there, but he's just not at that point now. So with all that being said, I don't think there's a chance in, in H.E. Double Hockey Sticks keep Thurman beats Earl Spence. I don't think there's a chance in H.E. Double Hockey Sticks that Terrence Crawford fights Earl Spence anytime soon. And I hope that Terrence Crawford takes that Pacquiao fight so Pacquiao can put it on his chin and we can move on with the welterweight division. Pacquiao becomes the oldest welterweight WBO champion in history. Now let me know what y'all think about that down in the comment section below. Hit that like button for me. Sure, sure, sure. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Holler at me on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. More than likely to get a response on the tube. So holler at me over there. And we are flying so Now I ain't never milked a cow, but I will get bread from a heifer. I'm ahead on my schedule, getting bread on that level. Y'all niggas is two faced. I slow a nigga's hustle down, leave him screw face. Now who takes that track? Sauce one, back at it again, back slapping your friends. Crack balance and gin, back sliding and sin. Max gotta attend to what that hustle brings in. Biggest problem on my streets by far Nigga get you for your ride, might leave it on fire Get your speakers wise, even your ties You can think I'm bullshitting, you'll believe it tomorrow When you in your driveway, not seeing your car uh, He pulled off when you was sound asleep And you can keep your little Bentley, cause them crowns is cheap Two twelves in the back, cruise down the street uh, so, we ain't that country, we ain't that country, we ain't that country So what, what's your country, we ain't that country